Hello everyone, my name is Brad Henson. Today I'm going to continue with the power supply upgrade series. In the last video I created the schematic and the board layout for the new power supply module. Uh, since then I have etched that design into a piece of copper clad using the toner transfer method. However, before I put this module into the power supply, into the final build, I want to test and make sure everything is working as expected. The three things I'm going to be looking for here are the appropriate voltage while under a load, the amount of heat while under a load, and the amount of ripple while under a load. To do that I've got a uh, small test er, set up here. I've got the main AC transformer, 7.5 volt uh, transformer that I plan to use in the power supply uh, connected to one of these on off switches so that I can easily control it. I've got an L, or the 7805 uh, power regulator connected to the heat sink and to the etched board. The EV blog inspired constant current uh, to put a precise load on the device. Uh, I've got my Agilent multimeter for measuring voltage. Uh, temperature uh, gun and then also a Tektronix 2225 oscilloscope for looking at the ripple. The first thing I want to take a look at is our voltage, uh, output voltage. So with the mains transformer, transformer turned on, I've got the Agilent multimeter connected to the output and with no load we're at 5.09 volts. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is add a half an amp and the reason I'm using a half an amp is I, I plan to use this board at a maximum of half an amp and so I want to put a realistic load on the device and so I'm at uh, 507 milliamps and you see we have a little bit of a voltage drop 4.907 volts uh, as I was expecting so uh, that looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to want to do is take a look at uh, our heat management. So I'll take a reference uh, heat uh, or temperature reading at both the power regulator and the bridge rectifier and then take another one in an hour or so while the device has been running under a load and see how we're doing. So starting out our 7805 reference it, uh, temperature is 94.5 degrees Fahrenheit. I know that seems a little high, but uh, it's quite warm in, in my lab here today, so that's, that's okay. And the bridge rectifier is 91.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now even though I'm planning to use this board at uh, a, half a, a half an amp, I have a one amp fuse in it. So I'm going to go ahead and crank up our, our load on the module uh, for maximum power. Now I'll let that run for about an hour and then we'll see where we stand. So the power supply module has been running for about an hour under uh, just shy of an amp uh, current load. We're going to take our measurements and see how things are going. The 7005 is at 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit and our bridge rectifier is measuring at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I didn't expect a lot of heat uh, considering this transformer. I tried to match it as best I could with the application. Uh, the transformer puts out 7.5 volts and we're only trying to regulate it down to 5 volts and so even operating it for an extended period of time under a high current load uh, we're not going to have as much heat dissipation. So the last thing I want to take a look at is the, the, the ripple on the DC output. Now to do that I've replaced the constant current uh, dummy load with a 10 ohm power resistor. And the reason for this is I won't get as much uh, noise introduced from the, the dummy load resistor versus the circuitry and the constant current. I've also got my oscilloscope probe connected directly to the output of our supply module. So what we're looking at here on the oscilloscope, I currently do not have the load resistor connected so we just have the 5 volts output from power supply module 
the scope is set to AC couple. Uh, the vertical scale is 10 millivolts per division. And I'm measuring a peak to peak voltage currently at a roughly 4 millivolts. Now that's really great without a load. Uh, however, when I apply the load and, and I've measured it out, this is going to put my anticipated uh, current requirement of 400, 500 milliamps. When I put this load resistor on here, I'm expecting some ripple. Uh, to, to manage that ripple, we use capacitance on the input and output of the voltage regulator. In this case, what I'm looking for is ripple under you know, roughly 30 or 40 millivolts uh, peak to peak. So I'll go ahead and put our load resistor on here. where we're triggering and so our voltage peak to peak has only increased to roughly 20 millivolts uh, it's not perfect it's not precision however it's going to meet my requirements for this power supply so I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out now that I have a higher level of confidence that this module is going to be safe to use in our final design uh, in the next video we're going to talk a little bit about component placement inside the case and then also how I plan to construct the front panel. If you found this video helpful, make sure you press the like button and I'll catch you next time.